How's it going, everybody? It's Kevin here once again, giving you another gameplay commentary. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the top five things I feel that Halo 6 or Halo Genesis, whatever the next Halo game is gonna be called, should do to be able to have a successful launch and successful lifespan for the game. Now, if you enjoy these kind of commentary videos or agree with any of the topics I mentioned, please make sure to tap that like button. It greatly helps this video get some more notoriety so then it can help three, help potentially reach the 343 because they watch YouTube content as well, what people are talking about in the community, so that they can hopefully have the next Halo game be the best game it could possibly be. Without further ado, let's just jump right into the topic here. So number one on the list for me, this isn't in any particular order, just uh, just uh, this is just the list. Either one can have its own priority or a preference. Number one on the list for me is achievable wrecks. Right now, the way the wreck system works, it is completely randomized. For the most part, I believe with the Helios Skrill armor, you can get that but by actually doing an achievement. But now it's also in the wreck system, so whatever. Achievable wrecks, I feel like it's a really good compromise between having people, players being able to work towards a goal or earn something that they want in the game and also have being able to monetize the customization and weapons in Warzone with rec packs. But what do I mean by achievable wrecks? Well, personally, I would like to see an ability to where I can earn a certain item that I want in the game and have to maybe grind my way to do it or have some kind of roadblocks in the way that I have to get to. Like, for example, I really wanted that Halo 2 Battle Rifle for an extremely long time. It came out like what, a few months after the game was released and I only received it once I hit like level 125 and that was about almost two years after the game was released. Literally any weapon or any other kind of unlock I received I did not care about because I wanted that Halo 2 Battle Rifle. The one thing I would like to see is an ability for a player to grind their way to earn that wreck specifically. Now they can put different kind of governing things in the way that make a player have to grind their way like rank up to level 100 first and then spend and then buy the rec card by earning say like 150,000 rec points and spending it on that one thing. So not only do you have to invest game time continually, but then also save up your rec packs as well for one thing. So you're yes, you are earning the thing that you want, but you're going to be missing out on all the extra content you will not be re unlocking by saving up your rec points for just this one specific thing. Now every free to play game that uses microtransactions to earn profit on their games gives you this ability to earn specifically what you want and with this game in Halo 5 we paid $60 but then also had to deal with the downside of having randomized microtransactions to earn the things that you want in the game. Now personally I think this would be a good compromise obviously there should be more detail worked out with that uh, but I feel like just having given the players the ability to earn what they want in the game is would be super important and really beneficial to the community and also to the developers as well. Number two on my list I feel like shouldn't have to be said but just to make sure things are working happen like this is that Halo 5 absolutely needs to have fair starts. Loadouts were a terrible idea for Halo 5. The whole idea by Halo is that everyone starts out the same and it's up to you into, with your game knowledge and tactics to do better in the game. That's why I enjoy playing Halo so much more than say in Battlefield, Call of Duty, or any other main shooter out there because it's all up to you to do well and it's up to you to know how to play to make your gameplay better. 343 did a great job of removing loadouts in Halo 4 and making it fair, back to fair starts in Halo 5 and I think that should be the continual uh, path moving forward when it comes to Halo. For adding in loadouts, it adds in randomization and randomization in deaths when you feel like you had an unearned death in a shooter is the worst thing to possibly do in the game and that's what all Halo 4 was. Number three on the list, I would like to see Halo 6 release as a full game. Now, I'm not saying just like it needs to have X amount of maps, X amount of game modes, this, this, and this, but like there are some parts about Halo that need to be in the game for it to be a full experience of what Halo has to offer. The reason why I'm saying that we need to release as a full package because the height of a popularity for a game like Halo, at least for pre right now, the way the model, their business model works, is that the popularity will always be the highest when the game initially releases. First impressions are huge. The first impression of Halo 5, not good. It wasn't good. Now I understand why 343 would decide to go with the trickle in tactic of uh, releasing content over time for Halo 5 because they were figuring it would maintain the player base a little bit longer. But the thing is that people were kind of frustrated about this little trickle in of content of standard game modes and customization that were found in previous Halos 
and they were just waiting, okay, we'll wait, you know, six months, eight months till the game is fully released and they'll start playing again. Like, we need an actual firefight, for one. We need an actual infection mode. We need Forge and a true social playlist to launch when Halo 5 launches. Number four on the list here is an improved experience for Warzone. Warzone is a great idea. I think they, 343 was super close to gaining something something really special with this game mode, but there was some, just some aspects that just kind of fell short, and I think that the only way they can really improve on it is reworking it for the next Halo game. Now, there was a leak of what uh, the next uh, Xbox press conference will be for uh, E3 2018, and it mentions Warzone 2.0. Now, this is just a leaked information, so nothing's confirmed by Microsoft for 343, but with E3 being so close, and a lot of the other kind of uh, leaks that were involved with this article that I read, and I made a video on it if you guys want to check it out, it'll be linked at the end of this video by Halo Genesis, and it would make sense that this could potentially be a thing, because we all know Warzone's coming back, for sure. But it needs to be improved. Uh, one aspect needs to have the landslide victories stop. Uh, it's The way Warzone works right now, it's rather land, like the one team can win very easily on top of another team. The way the, um, the rec points and leveling up kind of snowball into each other. This was even worse when the game initially released, but I know 343 took actions to make it so the snowball effect it wasn't so great with uh, earning rec points in game where you have guys who are level two like oh i just got my song of peace the assault rifle this is great and then you get boom you get bombed by a guy with a banshee because he knows what he's doing so they tried evening that out a little bit so the landsliding isn't as bad but it became a meme basically within warzone of the don't worry you can still destroy the enemy core but it was one of those things where if your team gets triple capped in practice um you're you're not gonna win. There's no chance of destroying that enemy core and coming back and winning because they capture all the hill points, then they get more wreck points, which means they unlock more powerful weapons than you, and you can see how this turns out. I think one way to help out with this landsliding is have AI farming be a more a more practical tactic in the game. It seems like a lot of times there's only like moments where you can actually go farm AI characters to rank up your team or gain more points for your team. Uh, but a lot of times I've had it happen where I'm like, wow, there's only like players to shoot right now. We're down by a lot. I need I need to earn more rec points so that I can do better to kind of fight against this team that's doing better than us, turn the tides in our favor. That doesn't really come around too often unless for these timed events. But then since these events are timed, everyone sees a marker on the map. Generally the team that's going to be doing well is already in positional advantage where they can take out these timed AI events. Now, if there are much more common AI guys that are just more smaller guys like Jackals, Grunts, uh, um, and Elites and something like that, rather than having special events characters come in that uh, gives, play gives a down team a chance to kind of, you know, grind their way up and or, you know, kill some AI, rank up, and do, do a lot better. Talking about these timed AI bosses in Warzone, I definitely think I'd like to see them more eventful. Now, some are more eventful than others, especially when it comes to the final boss, like Yap Yap, I believe his name is, or the warning come in. Yeah, they're much more eventful to the game because they are more involved with the, the gameplay. They're much more of a threat to deal with. They can kill you very easily, but then they're in the middle of the battle, so everyone's kind of shooting them at them at once, and you're shooting at other people around. It's actually rather entertaining. But when it comes to like, the mini bosses that I run, like say like Serpent Hunters pop in, I do not care about killing those super hunt serpent hunters at all. Now, maybe if they're less bullet spongy and maybe more common, and maybe they didn't earn so many uh, points towards your score, but helped you rank up your Rex, that'd be certainly beneficial. And also, I would like to see the reworking of points being uh, dealt to a team when it comes to uh, killing the boss, because basically I've seen it happen so many times where you just lay in damage, 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 damage on a guy, and then their team just swoops in and gets that last shot and gets all the points. That's really disheartening. It makes me not want to bother even going in for an AI kill because that's just super frustrating to have that happen. I would like to see a way to where uh, in the game that depending on how much damage a team deals, they that's how many points, a percentage of like 150 points, whatever that boss is worth, and say a red team does 80% of the damage, they get 80% of the points for killing that boss, even if the final team be beats them as well. That's just a suggestion. I might not, there might be some flaws to that, obviously, but it's coming off the top of my head. But just, and there's some rework that needs to be done with that because it's really disheartening having just the other team just swoop in for the last bit of the kill and where you worked 90% of the time, just 
lane in damage over and over again because it's such a bullet sponge. Now lastly, I would like to see a change to party match. From my experience for the first two and a half years of playing Halo 5, I've generally noticed that there was basically been a skill ceiling that happens. Mainly, a lot of times I end up just playing solo. But the problem is that once I get to the higher two gameplay, say a diamond and above, you kind of have to be rolling with a team of four to be able to progress further in the game, at least uh, for your ranks. And as a solo player, it's really disheartening when you get matched up against a full party and you're a team full of team players who may be the same level rank as the full team. But the thing is though, they have advantage of communication and teamwork where your team is just a bunch of people playing by themselves with no communication because no one talks in Halo 5, sadly. And so uh, they come in, the full party comes in with that clear advantage and wins a lot of time. Uh, you have players quit out too, which makes things even worse. Now, recently in Halo 5's May 2018 update, they implemented True Skill 2.0, which says they will hopefully, you know, mitigate the issue of full parties matching against solo players. And I mean, 343 said that uh, within Halo 5, that with the new matchmaking system, that they've seen solo players beat full parties. So we'll will hold you to that one, 343. I'm not holding my breath on that one, but. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check out on that because this is the biggest issue I find when it comes to solo players trying to rank up on their own. So in case that doesn't work or fix the issue, I'd like to see one, a mercy rule or a solo queue playlist, or something maybe even what to do with quick play where only parties of two or less can join into like a quick play slayer match. Just ultimately being steamrolled or by a full party is just not fun, and being the full party that's steamrolling on you know solo queue players. It's not fun either way, it's really unfair, and I really would like to see some changes happen with that. Anyways guys, that's the rest of this video here. Uh, if you like this kind of commentary and you enjoyed the uh, topics I brought up, if you feel like you agree with the topics here, please make sure to tap that like button. Like I said, it greatly helps this video get some more notoriety and shared around the community. So, you know, 343 gets a chance to see, to hopefully see this video, and that uh, we get the chance to show what we want in our next Halo game. Exactly. Anyways guys. If you want to see some more content from me, make sure to tap the subscribe button because I'm always uploading awesome Halo content on this channel. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.